What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Good day wherever you are at the planet earth where God has placed you. If it is morning time in that part of the earth which the Lord has given you opportunity to leave, I say good morning. If it is afternoon time at your place, I say good afternoon. And if it is evening time at the planet earth which you, God, the Lord God has ordained that you should be at this moment, I say good evening. It is a nice time and it's a good season out there. I want to welcome you once more to the hour of encouragement, the encouragement hour. We've been running a series so far on the parable of the sower and we've looked into part one, part two, part three, part four and now we want to look at part five so that we can have the enough time to dive into the other phase two of Jesus Christ's interpretation of the parable of the sower. Let me tell you, the parable of the sower is so essential to our time and season, to this generation. Hallelujah. Our ability to understand the parables in the Bible will give us an insight to what is really, really happening around us. Uh, the pandemic situation that the world has found itself is already predicted in the word of God. So it is not a surprise or it should not be a surprise to a child of God that is familiar with the scripture. Hallelujah. So if the time permits us, we will dive into that. But at the moment, we want to look at part five of the parable of the sower on the phase one. Hallelujah. The phase one have to deal with how human beings should have been, they been, been, been the, the, the thoughts that should be running in the human heart if paraventure you happen to be among the multitude that the Lord was giving out this parable. What, what will be going on in your mind? What will be going on in your mind? What will be coming across the what will be the thought that will be coming across your mind? And that is what we'll be dealing with the human aspect of the parable of sower so we we will looked at so many areas and as time continues we're going to look at the interpretation that jesus christ gave is so vital to christian living is so vital to the kingdom mysteries hallelujah so the bible says to his, uh, the jesus christ said to his disciple if you cannot understand even this parable how then can you understand all other parables so the parable of the sower uh to us as believers is a foundational is a springboard for us to get insight to more of god and jesus christ's teachings hallelujah praise the lord are there enough word that is in the word of god i mean the bible there is enough sermon there is enough sermon there's enough word that we have not even finished we have not even dived into it much so uh, if 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 i find people you know deviating from the gospel truth of the word of god of jesus christ teaching it baffles my heart it gives me a kind of concern and that is why i take a time by the help of the holy spirit that we can depend more on the holy ghost for interpretation uh, now at times we depend on man we want to hear from man. We want to hear from man. And not knowing that men are just, you know, there to perfect, to perfect the scent. They are not there to make the scent. They are not there to produce a scent. They are not there to, to dominate the scent. They are just there as an instrument. So if we see them as servants of the living God, and if they see themselves as servants of the living God, then those heresies, those gospels those principles that are that has nothing to do with the dispensation of grace hallelujah will not find a way into our growth and into our kingdom hallelujah praise the lord so we'll be looking at the parable of the sower the phase one of it and this this should be the this should guide us towards the end of the phase one and what is the topic that we should be looking at today i welcome you i welcome you once more 
into the hour of encouragement, the encouragement hour. We'll be looking at the seeds, the good ground experience. The seed, the good ground experience. Hallelujah. We've dive, we've dive into so many areas at which on which the seeds fell into. We've looked at the seed that fell into by the wayside. We've also looked at the seed that fell on the thorns, the, the, the seeds that fell on the stoning, you know, ground. And now we want to look at the seed that fell on that fell on the good ground. And I believe that the Holy Spirit shall give you more interpretation as we continue in the name of Jesus. There are vital points that we should not do away with. However, we shall read the scripture. There are, there are three accounts in the Bible uh, among the gospel scriptures. Hallelujah. Among Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they held an account of the parable of the sower. And as God has given them interpretation and grace, they brought out, you know, the content of what Jesus Christ rendered in those days. Hallelujah. However, we shall be looking at Luke chapter 8 and see what Luke chapter 8, um, you know, uh, uh, blessed, the, uh, blessed us with. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8. Praise the Lord. Remember that we've been looking at uh, Mark chapter 4 or, and uh, Matthew chapter 13. But this morning, we want to look at Luke chapter 8 and see how Luke, Luke a, a, a chapter 8 puts it in his own account. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember that the scripture is given for our own benefit, for our own benefit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 8, I read from verse, from verse, um, uh, from verse uh, 8. Uh, from verse 8 and the Bible says and other fell on good ground and sprang up and bore fruit and hundred food and when they had said these things he cried he that had ears to hear let him hear hallelujah remember the scripture here in Luke chapter 8 verse 8 says that an other fell on good ground, good ground, good ground, good ground. What make this this ground good? That is what we sh will be will be looking at. What makes this ground good? Good. What make this ground different from other ground that the other seed fell into? Praise the Lord. Remember there are four grounds before this good ground we have the wayside hallelujah we have um we have sorry there are three we have the wayside and we have the stoning ground and we have the thorns hallelujah and now we are now coming to the good ground what makes this ground good hallelujah and the bible says that and sprang up remember those other ground uh, uh, apart from one those other ground gave opportunity to the seed to spring forth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what makes this ground good? Is it that it gives, it gives opportunity for seeds to spring forth? Is it that it gives opportunity for, for, for seeds to grow? What made this ground good? Remember that those seeds that fell on the thorns, among the thorns, sorry, and those ones that fell on the stony ground, they also sprang off. They sprang forth, hallelujah. They sprint, they, they, they germinated, hallelujah. They, 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 they gave out evidence of life in them, hallelujah. There was evidence of life. There was a foundational growth that people could evidently see, praise the Lord. So what made this, what made this good, this ground good? That is a question I want you to also ask the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is our perfect teacher. He is the one that can speak in the language which you will understand. You might not understand the mysteries that I am saying right now. But let me tell you, if you trust the Holy Spirit, He is going to give you in more better interpretation than what I'm saying right now. I'm just a vessel. Hallelujah. And I want to use this medium to to recognize those that have been that have been texting, that have been sending me some chat messages, text messages, appreciating what the Lord is using us to do. I've always said that even though 
even though the praises doesn't come or the acknowledgement doesn't come, the word of God must be preached. The word of God must move forward. So we are not prepared by the accolade that we receive. We are prepared by the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, we still appreciate those accolades. We appreciate those praises to the glory of the Lord. And that gives us more value to what we are planted here as human and as elect and as sent to do on this planet here to fulfill purpose and to bring the desire of the lord to pass in our life and generation hallelujah so the bible says here that they bore fruit and hundred fold hundred fold a hundred fold and that is what the the account of luke Luke gave us that they bore fruit an hundredfold. Praise the Lord. And that is what the aspect of Luke saw, hundredfold. But the question is, they bore fruit. That should be the different. Hallelujah. That should be a different that is clear to us. Praise the Lord. Like my African people will say, the difference is clear. This is the point where the difference is clear. From the seas that fell from on the thorns, the sea that fell by the wayside, and the sea that fell among the, the, the stony ground, hallelujah, on the stony ground, the difference is not because they sprang forth. Is that you are that's that a seed is growing does not mean that the seed has fulfilled all its, all its purpose, hallelujah. That a seed is has grown to a tree does not mean that it has fulfilled its purpose. However, that shows progress. But the major aim of the seed being sown is that the seed can give back. The seed can reproduce. Hallelujah. A seed that doesn't give birth or that's not reproducing is not a good seed. It is the good seed that fell on a good ground that produced a good result. I come again. It is the good seed that fell on a good ground that produced a good result. And no wonder the Bible says that some sprang and they bore fruit all two hundred fold. Hallelujah. That was the account of, of Luke, hundred fold experience. And that is what the good ground experience is all about. The good ground experience is all about bearing fruit. There is nothing else. Bearing fruit. I might not say that these fruits were not challenged or this fruit or these seeds when they did not face any obstacles. Let me tell you, for a seed to be sown in the ground, is it, it, it struggles. It, there is a lot of battle that that seed have to face. The seed have to die before it can bring forth a, 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 a an evidence of being sown. Hallelujah. So I don't want to give, I don't want to play down because the Bible did not say it here. It does not mean that this seed did not pass through experiences or challenges of life. Praise the Lord. What kind of seed have you sown that is passing through challenges of life? What kind of seed is being sown into you that is being tested at this moment? Remember, our faith is like a seed. Your faith is like a seed. Our ability to allow that faith to be tested and spring forth and bring forth fruit. Evidence of praise. Evidence of soul winning. Evidence of preaching the gospel. Evidence of outreaching. Evidence of being brother's keeper. Evidence of loving one another. Those are fruits that, you know, a, a, a others cannot bear. Praise the Lord. No one that we are different. The scriptures say in in, 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 in um, in Peter, that ye are a chosen generation. Our seed makes us chosen. Our seed, the seed the Lord has sown in us, 
praise the Lord, the seed that we have allowed to grow in us makes us a, a, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are royal priesthood. We are not just an ordinary believers. We are not just an ordinary elect. We are not just an ordinary saint. We are a chosen generation. And what makes us chosen generation is this the seed that abides in us. Is the seed that has been sown in our life. Hallelujah. He said that we are a peculiar. That means we are not just an ordinary human being. At the face of pandemic, we are not an ordinary human being. An ordinary human being will be panicking, but a, a child of God will rejoice. We rejoice like Paul did. Paul said, for me to live is, for me to die is. So whether it is die, dying or living, it is to the glory of God. An ordinary man, ordinary human being will not see that way. There is nothing like glory to God. Even at the falling down or at the rising up, there is no glory to God. But a child of God, because there is a seed, a purposeful seed that has been sown into us, we become a purposeful, you know, human, human being. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. So, you know, Luke gave this account. But let us look what Mark account is all about. Let's look at Mark chapter 4 and see what Mark really gave out as, as the Holy Spirit guided him to note on the account of the parable of the sower. Mark chapter 4, hallelujah. Mark chapter 4, verse, um, yeah, verse, um, verse 8. Mark chapter 4, verse 8. The same verse 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 8. This is Mark chapter 4, verse 8. The, the scripture is so interesting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. Their fruit sprang forth and that fruit increased. That is to show the fulfillment of purpose. Multiply, dominate, hallelujah. There is no way you can dominate without increase. There's no way you can dominate without, you know, producing. There's no way you can dominate without giving out evidence of your faith as a believer. Praise the Lord. So they increased and brought forth some 30. Remember, Luke only gave us an account of 100 fold. But thanks be to the Lord. For we are looking at the scripture with the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Not with an academic eyes. Because if an academic eyes, you begin to criticize the scripture here. You begin to tell people that the scripture is not true. Hallelujah. But with the eyes of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you the joy to connect scripture with scriptures. Not to disagree scripture with scripture. is to connect scripture with scripture. And see what the distinction.